Nath. Um, well, it's been about two months since we filmed our footage of, and had a bit of a comparison with the binoculars. We haven't got them all here today, but we had my Swarovski SLC 10x42s. Yep. My brother's 8 by 34 Vortexes. 32 Vortex yep. Razors. That actual mole's discontinued now. And what else did we have there, Nate? We had the little Maven B3s in 8x30. Maven B2s in 9x45. And on the tripod we had the big Maven B5s in 18x50. So... Hold on. No, we also we had the... 10x50 Mavens yes, in the C... C3s, I think they were, um, which are their, more their budget or lower end version, um, for the want of a better terminology. But we'll get into that, the results, not that we were trying to get a result on what was best, we were comparing to... Well, it's C good to compare, it's, it's really, um, I think we spoke about it up there, it's, it's good fun to get nice binoculars and see what happens to different ones different yes. light scenarios they're all a little bit varied in the result some are some were brighter some were sharper that's um, right yeah it wasn't a you know there might have been a few black and white clear things that we noticed but it's uh, a lot of it was just a comparison to see what we both thought we had a different opinion on a few things how yes. we saw things everyone's eyes are different and and yeah, look, we'll, to clarify that point, we'll, from the outset, I'm nearly 10 years exactly older than Nathan. I'm, I'm 50 in a couple of weeks. Um, probably by the time you watch this, I will be 50, and Nathan's 40. So 39, mate. Yeah, oh, come on. You're going to roll over. <laughs> You're greyer than me. <laughs> I've got, that's because I've got more hair, mate. <laughs> so... There, what we picked up were some significant differences there in what application of binoculars you would choose depending on your age. And I think it's worthy of saying that we didn't go into this with an objective of finding the best pair of binoculars. It was, a, as Nate said, a comparison. Um, and I, it, we should also say... To give this some historical context, Nathan and I have both owned some really good glass in the past. I've owned some Steiners um, and Swarovskis. And what what about yourself? Leica, Zeiss, Carl's, Vortex, Nikon. Uh, yeah, I've certainly had probably too many, but yeah. So we've between yeah. the two of us, we've probably had you know, covered most of the top tier off. Um, and in discussions with a few blokes that have taken an interest in what we were doing over the phone um, over the last two months, there's a couple of binoculars that they've asked if we would try and get a hold of and have a look at, and we'll work on that. Um, we started at just before dusk, and we ran... Nearly 45 minutes. Yeah, we, we, it was, we walked out under headlight and packed up under headlight. headlight. So it was it was dark. Like, you wouldn't see an animal with naked eye yeah. and by the time we were finished. And the spot we chose was really good. Um, we had a clearing at 350 metres below us, yeah. uh, which happened to be someone's small acreage and they had some pet goats in there which was really was you know serendipitous and it was really fortunate because then we're going oh look there's some horns on them we're comparing horn sizes and we're yeah. able to watch them we had another clearing out around What's 550 600 yeah. in that yeah that 450 to 600 range um and that had a fence and it was solid bush behind it so it was sort of like fringe country yeah Good shadows in that. that yeah. That's a good comparison. Comparison. And then we had another clearing out around, I think it was 13, 1400. Uh, if 
if we've forgotten these distances, you know what? It's I'll just because Dave's old, that's yeah, all right. Yeah, that's all right, yeah. But we'll put that up in further in the video. And then we also had the opportunity to look at 2.4 Ks with the big 18 by 50s as it got darker um, in the evening as well. So, so I think probably one of the big takeouts for me, Nath, was the fact that the C1 10 by 50s surprised the shit out of me. Like, if you're in the position that you can't afford, let's call it top end glass, totally get that. But what we saw out of that, and the C1s are sort of in the six to eight hundred dollar range, so yeah, it's it's a push up from the budget level, but by no means not doable. Was that? Yeah, they weren't as sharp, were they? No, they they did drop a little bit of edge sharpness. And in that, you know, people talk about low light performance. There was a little bit of a drop there. But to put that in context, it was in that very last bracket of light. It wasn't, you know, the sun went down, we put those away and we looked through the other ones. No. The, 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 gap, the gap's there, but it wasn't. It wasn't a massive gap, you know, if you had to pack your gear up and go home five minutes earlier. Yeah, and like we were glassing to a point where you would have been struggling to take a shot. Uh, yeah, and that that's the takeaway from it, isn't it? We yeah. pushed it right up to the end. Beyond. In shadows, shadow. sundown. Yeah, uh, like and, to yeah. the point that if you had a non-illuminated scope, you we were minimum 10 15 minutes past that now what was surprising about the 10 by 50 c1 mavens was that even against the better binoculars of the smaller size the 30 mil objectives its performance was really good like it started to meet and surpass them as it got darker so you're not going to buy eight by 30s to sit in glass right into the last light. They haven't got the light gathering ability of the bigger binos. No, they don't. So, my take out was, if you, like I started to say, if you didn't have the coin to spend on yeah, the top of the end of the bino world, buy a bigger binocular. Buy something like an 8x45 or a... 10 by 50 you'll get much more versatility yeah, get that get that bigger exit pupil, pupil that's, that's yeah. what it's all about yeah you'll get much yeah. more a range or versatility out of one model of binoc more versatile usage yeah. you'll get morning they weigh a bit more yes but like the construction of the c1s is a is a um, composite plastic whereas like the no oh, the, these Bigger binos, they're, they're magnesium. magnesium alloy. They're heavier. Heavier, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you 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 get a little bit of weight saving relative to similar binoculars when you go to a composite plastic, but they've got other mechanical disadvantages. Um, I'm not right across that. I'm not an optics engineer. And we're talking from the perspective of what we saw. Just users, yeah. Yeah. Um, yep. And it was quite surprising how well they went. So. So where to next? <clears throat> the um... well, I guess we started we started small and worked our way up. We did yeah. through the range. So we started. I mean, we had a pair each most of the time. We didn't we didn't share a pair, did we? We we we'd, no. we'd always swap. So we always had a piece of um piece of glass in our hands. We started with the little eight by thirties and eight by thirty twos. Yes. Um, and we we're constantly swapping, like every yep three all the time. And Two, that three, was really four. good to see. So we'd, uh, we'd started with the smaller ones. We looked, oh, yeah, we swapped those a few times. There were a few things that we noticed straight away. And then we'd grab a, a bigger pair. We'd grab the, the 9x45s or your 10x42s. We started to compare those. And then you'd go back to the smaller ones and you'd think, oh, wow, that's look at that difference. There was a big gap between some of those performance gaps. Then... 
yeah, we just compared, we just bounced around. Yeah, we As did, the light yeah. changed, other things came out. We were mixing them in and out, and there were some quite surprising things. Like, we were probably on the last limits of shooting light, and an old mate walked out of the, the bush line and up across the grass flat at about 450-500, and he had a dog with him, walking his dog. Now... We, used, we looked at, through all the binoculars at that guy and w we took, as we mentioned earlier, age. Nath could make out all the detail he needed. I could see everything. I could target acquisition if that was what was required. You know, I could see the dog and you know, I could see the lead and his collar. But what I could see was one mono block colour dog. Nath could see that the dog had brown socks. Yeah, I could see the colours on it. And yeah. I couldn't make that out. So that was a demonstration about how your eyes degrade as you get older and that you're probably well worth spending the mo more money on better optics than if you're younger. If you're younger, you're in your 30s, you can probably get away with a cheaper glass. Yeah, um, I notice it now. Compared to ten years ago, yeah, especially low light stuff. Yes, it's um, I can still see all right in it, but it's not. And your eyes. I used to do it heaps easy. You know, you could sort of see and see and see, and then it got dark. Now, that that grey area is becoming more noticeable. Yes, and I find now my Definitely. eyes take longer to adjust as the light fades away. Um, so I've got to be much more conscious about if I'm using headlamps or lamps around me not to. You know, send my night vision backwards because it takes significantly longer than it used to for me to adjust. So, you sound like a pair of grumpy old blokes. <sighs> Sydney whinging about that. <laughs> it could be. But you do you do notice it as you, you get, as you get older, definitely. So I guess what the standout binocular, um, because people are going to ask and people will want to know, was the Maven. B1s, wasn't it? B1s or my B2s? B2s, The B2s. Sorry. So, yeah. yeah, I tried to say in the evening not to be biased because these are mine. But it was really interesting to put these up against those 10 by 42 Two Swarovskis. Swarovskis the, yeah. What were they? The SLCs? SLCs, um, yeah. And they're about four years old, three years old. Yeah. So we didn't pick much of a difference between them until that right up we talked about that very last minute of light yes these had a little bit of an edge but they do run a different prism system and we talked about it on the night these are heavier as well they're they a bit are. longer so it's, it's certainly trade-offs but i think it was good for me to see i pretty much had a good idea that these were really good but it was good to stack them up against other binoculars and in, in challenging conditions, that's probably the big thing that you don't get. It's always hard to take away from a, a YouTube review, but you don't get to push optics in a gun shop. No. It's the middle of the day, it's staff hours, um, it's it's good to see them in You're that. in an urban... Yeah. The majority of time you're in an urban environment. From my perspective, the B2s... Um, they were pretty good. It was, they were sharper yeah. than my Suarez. Um, and that was even earlier on. And I think they had a bit more colour definition. Well, I thought they they did. In the, or they were a little brighter. They were a little bit... Oh, we said on the night the soirees were still bright. Yeah. I just thought we had a bit of a scenario with those goats and they fed under some pine trees into the shadow after the sun had set. And I remember being able to pick out uh, a little bit more horn definition. Yes. And they were only, like, not, we're not talking big billy gates, they're only little, little things, but you could see the horns on one particular animal with the mavens and you couldn't see them. See them with the swarovs. You could still see everything else. It's yes. just that some of those really little details jumped out. I remember that. Yeah, and that may well be important when you're going on a, a sheep hunt and you're trying to determine full curl yep. or... And, and or broomed off and you're getting into the last light and maybe you're not taking the shot in that scenario but you want to know which animal you're going to chase the next day 
that little tiny little bit of edge that may make your decision a whole lot easier to see that yep. and go we're coming back for this animal now and and in that scenario if you've dropped 15k on a hunt well two thousand dollars on a set of binoculars that are going to last seven up five six seven eight ten years that that's not a lot of money to spend no. considering the no. all the other kit you spend money on too to make hunts like that happen yeah i always say buy good binoculars you um you can put a lot of money into a rifle scope which is important because you need good glass to be able to make the shot but if you compare how many hours you spend looking pair it through a pair of binoculars versus the 30 seconds you look through a scope for I think the investment's certainly important on good binoculars. It is, yeah. yeah. Um, and you see a lot of online discussion about, oh, yeah, it's not worth it. Well, yep, I get it. Everyone's got a budget. Fortunately, I've been able to spend good money on binoculars. Um, but it does make a difference. But as we said earlier on, if you can't extend to that top level, consider a, a bigger format binocular in say a 50 mil objective yeah or yeah those 10 by 50 c series yeah. mavens they were still really good binoculars yeah. i you got to keep in mind that they were they're they're at a price point, point yes. but i think in that price point if someone said to me oh, look i've got 800 bucks to spend i'd have no reservations so no, look right. have a look at these those, yeah. um, I, th I think the other thing to um touch on too is just because we say those b2s were the best in our test is don't race out and buy them. Mm -hmm. i think what you got to go on everyone's body shape and hands and what they like in fit and feel is different and when i bought my slcs the mate and i looked both at els and slcs now we were in a gun shop scenario, but we were able to use those binoculars for a good 45 minutes backwards and forwards. And the overall deciding factor, the SLCs for me and my mate were a lot nicer to hold. Um, so yeah, that's something to consider. Like We, talk, we talked about it on the night. I, I had a pair of Leica Ultravids before these B2s. The image on both was stellar. I liked the focus wheel oh, on the Mavens. You know, it. it's such a silly little thing. You think, oh, it's all about the image. There's still a lot in the interface between you and those binoculars it when is. you spend hours behind them. And and that is where there was, like, the handling differences between handling the difference. C there classes was, yep. and the Bs. Like, yep. Focusing the, speed was different. Yep. Some fa focused slow, some were fast. The... And the next podcast on hunting a rep, we're speaking to one of the guys from Maven, and he talks about the design of this focus wheel. And it took them a long time to get it right, and they put a lot of work in it. And I don't know whether you can see, but from here to here, front to back, it actually has a slight radius. In it, front to back, it's just oh, in the in that pro side. Yeah, it's not a it's not a it's not, it's a, not square, a cylinder. It's not a square. Yeah. top. Yeah, it's got that little bit of roll to roll it. Roll to it. Yeah. Um, the feel of it is magnificent. Nath obviously thinks the same. Oh um, and it's very precise. No slack in yeah. any of the B's. Like there's three B series. We here. probably should have added these. These are all our binoculars. All bought and they're, paid They're for. all ours. The the ten by fifties were uh, were something to kind of review. I, yeah, I guess. Yeah, we got. But but all of these are ours. Uh, and I it's just coincidental. I've, I've I've met Dave through various channels. But I owned these before you had Mavens. Yes. Um. So we we all we we both found them on their own merits. I we suppose. did. Was and, it? And no it, one said, "Oh, here have these." That's right. And Nathan didn't influence me to buy those no. big ones. I had been talking to Robbo from Bolt Action Productions. Um, when I went to Victoria, I didn't have a spotter. Robbo, Robbo had his spotter. 
we shared it around a bit sometimes it's extra weight the spotters are physically when you get into the decent ones are physically bigger you know you're talking about this long if you start using them for a long period of time which we did because in that scenario when with Robbo and Ben and I the closest to us was six to seven hundred meters and we were glass into twelve hundred so we were stretching the limits of the binoculars so the spotter got used a lot now you do get a lot of eye strain you can end up with a headache now robbo ended up he bought a set of the 15 by yeah, 50 yep. slcs and he loves them and i don't he hasn't used the spotter a lot since he had the 15s yep. I did and the I, same thing I, i've recently sold my 15 by 56 swaros yeah but i had them for eight or nine years yeah now yeah. they're good yeah, those, so, those what are they class them as big eyes or whatever they yeah. want to class them as those, those the the size range that you have to tripod mount to use. Yeah, you definitely don't get that eye strain of using a spotter. Yes, but the like, image, I, I can't remember what people state with the zoom, but if they're an eighteen power, and they're they're, they're, they're equivalent to a higher magnification single eye. Yes. Because you don't get that strain, you get a bigger field of view, yeah, yeah. but you can still see really good detail in those. So, so when I went, made the decision to go down that road to go to a decent set of binoculars, I did my own research. Um, multiple areas, different reading different stuff, and like Nath said, you want to read some really good stuff on binos, get on the birding yeah, forums. Yeah, bird forums are really good for that. The, I, I, they're really, work out, yeah. there's some... Um, great There's information really knowledgeable people yes um, and so yeah. and and that speaks to we should work on what when we're talking to other groups work on what's common to us not what's different so yeah, yeah these came up trumps in multiple reviews so i i committed and i'm super happy with them um, i think that'll come out when we show the footage yes because I haven't, I hadn't looked through those. Yeah. And we mucked around with all the, call them the smaller binoculars. And then when the light got really poor, we, we got those out on the tripod. And what were we looking at that building? It was two, two and a half thousand metres away. Well, yeah, it was a long way away. And yeah, that, that gap between performance between eight, nines and tens to 18s. Yeah. And it was, it was, it was, it was really obvious. There's, We'll show the video and I'll put up a photo straight after that video of that sign. I'll go over and take a photo of that sign we were looking at and we were able to read it at two and a half thousand metres. It's pretty away. crazy. Yeah. You looked at it with these ones and you could just see like a, a coloured line. line. You knew that it was a sign, that was it. Yeah, that's crazy, isn't it? It is, yeah. Like I can see the difference between the nine and the ten power on that sign at two and a half thousand yeah, meters. Yeah, look at that. But that those eighteens are just next level. So let's say modern, contemporary, traditional since nineteen eighty six. I think it <laughs> yeah. says that's crazy. So where where I've ended up since doing that is I've sold my Swarovski and bought a set of the 8x. You, got, you bought a pair of those little guys, didn't you? Yep, I'm looking forward to it. They'll be my go-to carry binoculars, and if I'm in an area where that I'm, I'm going to glass, they'll be in the set up. pack, yep. and just pull the tripod out, and I can glass till the heart's content. Can you think of anything else that was is worthy of considering? Like, yeah, there's weight. You can look at construction. Um, most definitely have a, a listen to the upcoming podcast, the Hunting Arette podcast with Cade Matesta from Maven. I, I've tried, I tried to get a podcast with a local Australian optics expert who's well regarded in the repair field, but he just has not got time. Yeah, 
I had some experience with the 18 by 56 Mavens and I approached Maven and they were happy to do a podcast. Um, so we talked some general generalizations about optics and then a little bit about specifics. But it, it is a crowded market, the optics market. Definitely. And, you know, Maven have prided themselves on the establishment of being direct to consumer. They're not, you can buy direct to consumer from Maven in America to Australia if you want, but they do have an Australian distributor. Um, we'll put some links up for that. Um, and a shout out to Josh. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. Yep. He, we got those binoculars on loan because I said, we've already got four or five other models. And he said, well, I'll throw something into the mix a bit different. And he sent those up. So it was really, I was sort of, okay, yeah, we're looking at the, the bottom end of their range, sort of the mid level range, but it was really revealing yeah, was. On, yep. on how yep. it came out. Um, yeah, you know, unfortunately, some of the shows haven't been on this year, um, and who knows what goes on into twenty twenty one. But shows are probably a great place to have a look for fit and feel and an initial um, evaluation. They're not the best place to really critically evaluate yeah. one against it's the good other. At th- Again, what we found is it was really, and it's, it's it's hard to do, but it was really good to, to, to go from one to the other. Yes. And I guess at a show, you can go from the, you know, you might go from a, a Nikon stand to a Maven stand and the Swarovski guys will be there and you can you can probably yeah directly go from one to the other if, the, if it's not too crowded. Any questions, post them below. We'll try and follow up on them. Yeah, we certainly help answer them. Uh, I'm sure you'll get some buy-in from Maven if we ask for help. If there's something that comes up that we're not sure. Yep. Um, um, I think the the one binocular, there's been three blokes say to me, I don't know about Nath, the one model of binocular that some of the guys I know have asked for us to put up against these. Because, you know, we've sort of established a benchmark out of this. Yeah, it might suit Nath and I, these, but... Not Might suit not everyone. Suit, suit yeah. everyone. Yep. Was the Myopter Optique. Yeah. If anyone has a set out there, they're willing to lend us, or if Winchester Australia um, are happy to send a set up, a demo set up, and yeah, want an honest appraisal of them. Um, yeah, we we'll put that up against these again. As we said, this is not there to say maven 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 it's just the fact that they yeah. came out really well yeah so we both walked separate roads and ended up with it's a similar result, result so. yeah so yeah it's been a and you know an interesting it, one yeah there's a few blokes say that there's you know this the euro snobbery of optics well i think what we've proven out of that is yeah you're probably right um yeah i've sort of probably eaten it a, a reasonable serve of humble pie with my brother saying, oh, yeah, Suaro snobs and that. and Yeah, they're bloody good glass, but the Japanese um, yeah. combined, Japanese optics combined with, you know, an extensive hunting experience and application of optics by Maven and um, putting these gear, this gear together is... They've done they stack up really, pretty well. Really yeah, well. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, you've got your your Swaro snobbery. I sold a pair of Leica Ultravids for yeah. these. So the other point that's been raised with me is warranty. Now, okay, that's a good point. Um, yeah. Like Swaro have proven time and time again to have really good warranty. One of Robbo's mates had an issue, and they were fixed without question. His binos. So, yeah, their, their warranty is... Their warranty is... Well, I had a, a, a Carl's warranty. Yep. And claim. for those that aren't aware, Car, Carl's is now part of Swarovski. Swarovski. They, they fix them up. So, yeah, the, and they and that was a... 15-year-old? 15-year-old model. scope. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's they, they definitely stand behind the products that they do sell. So, you might pay a little bit more for it. 
but they stand behind it and that's some of that stuff's been used pretty hard so and may even have got a great warranty but to be fair to everyone else i've i know of no one that's tested the warranty um, or even whether it has had to be tested so which is a good attribute to the product that yes. no one has to it's good to have it but it's a shame when you do see it used yes. regularly it'd be nice to have the warranty and not have to use it yep. to round it out go and try stuff if you can reach out to people and ask to have a go under field conditions with their binos that is the best way to do it yep um try them if you don't like holding them you're not going to use them so get something that suits and you enjoy holding them and using them and Find what works for you in your budget and how the fit and furl is. You know? Yeah. It's, um, yeah. That interface between you and the binoculars is very important. Important. If you go on and look at binoculars in optic shops or gun shops, I would suggest make it your first pass and take a notebook and a pen and write there as you do it, before you even walk out to the car, write your thoughts and notes on those binos there. So when you get to, you know, you might be traveling across Melbourne or Sydney or across, you know, any city in the world to another gun shop or another optics place, you've got that, that your thoughts on, at the time you looked at that glass in your hand and you can have a look and then write those down. So then you can start to see the yeah. pros and cons of what you've looked at. And then maybe you narrow it down to two or three pairs and if you can find someone that's prepared to meet you in the bush or on the urban fringe uh, late in the afternoon and you know sit with them and make a decision people can be pretty helpful if you ask Us. nicely yep. i've found that's right sort of certainly help people show them things that i might have yeah it's um yeah and a, another way or one way i like if i'm purchasing a new rifle new scope or new binos go into excel all the, the makes and models across the top and all the categories I'm looking at, weight, magnification, yeah, all that sort of stuff down the side, price. So I can look at all that information that's in the technical specs in one spot. You're yeah. showing our OCD now. Yeah. I probably do the same thing, did. but there's some important things if you do list that, just me personally, that I, because I've done the same thing, I hate to admit it. Um, weight's always an issue. Field of view is something yes. worth looking at. That's one thing that the I've certainly noticed that the premium binoculars will have. They might have a high magnification, but a reasonable field of view. Whereas you might drop back, you might drop back from say a ten power premium binocular to an eight power lesser binocular. We won't call it a budget binocular, but a lesser binocular, and the field of view might be a, a similar number. Yes. Um, whereas you might look at another option, and the field of view might be a hundred feet less. Yes. And that's, and, and that's, I, that's important. That was a standout in the test too, was the Maven B2s are a very unique configuration. They are. Yeah, so they sit between, that, that 9x45 is a, a bit of a niche yes. window, and that's certainly why I brought them. I did a review on these myself, and, and I talked about that a bit. Uh, they... I'll put a link below to yeah, Nate's review on they, that. They have a very unique field. They've got the field of view and the brightness of a pair of 8 power binoculars, but you can see just as much detail with 9s as you can with 10s. Yeah. And it sounds really simple to say that, but you've sort of got to look at it to to pick it. But to you've looked, it, yeah. you had looked at these yeah. before that evening, and you picked up on And we had well. the benefit there was a chain link fence out of the four five hundred meter mark, four fifty five hundred meter on the bush fringe, so we we're able to line up the posts and go right. I can see this many gaps. Yeah, I can see you know, six posts, posts, and the other one like, you'd go. Oh, I can only see, see three. Or yeah. I hope it helps people. Yeah, so do I. Um, and look, we're I, Nathan and I have worked. Yeah, as Nate said, we sort of got suggested to get together by a mutual friend and Nathan and I hadn't met and we we talk on a regular basis now. We would have hunted Victoria 
this past year off December if we if had we been able to cross the border. Cross into that country, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. Um, but Chairman Dan had other other yep. thoughts. Yep. Um, but we're trying to do more stuff together. Um, yeah. Find an, I'm a shift worker, yeah. So we've got to try and match up our availability. So who knows what comes in the future, you know. Um, no, it's good to just sit down with someone that's got a similar, well, not just a similar interest, but similar background, similar experience, similar goals. Yeah. Uh, but might not we. We don't necessarily agree on the same points when we have an in-depth discussion, so... Sometimes yeah, we don't. We don't. Um, but that's... Um, that's a good thing. That's human nature. Because, I know Nate makes me, Nate's opinions make me think about my opinions and... Vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. So, yep. yep. Um, hopefully more to come and um, thanks for supporting Hunting a Rep. Um, yeah, it's been a bit slack on the content over the last few months, but... Yeah, that's uh, life and a few of my personal desires and projects getting in the way there, but some of that will come up on the content too. Yep. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and thanks, Nate. Yeah, thanks, Do it again. We will. Thanks for watching.